My pal Bob Block died at 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Friday, September 23rd. This, uh, this commentary goes in a couple of different places. Uh, bear with me as I go there. When I got into L.A. in 1962, I was broke, dead flat broke. It's one of those Horatio Alger stories. I had literally 10 cents in my pocket, 10 cents. And uh, I was uh, getting divorced from a lady, and uh, she had a son from a previous marriage, and uh, we had uh, driven out here, and I got here broke. And I wound up in a motel, and I was stuck in that motel for two weeks because I didn't have the money to get out. And I went and I asked Bob Block, whom I had known for many years. I'd known Bob since I was 14 years old. I went and I asked Bob Block if he could uh, grub stake me a couple of hundred bucks. It's 1962, $200 was a lot of money. Bob had just come out of a year-long Writers Guild strike and uh, was pretty close to the edge, had no money, but I didn't know that. Gave me the $200. I was unable to pay him back for five, six years. He never asked me for it once, never. When I paid it back, it's almost as if he didn't remember it. Bob Block uh, was a good friend of mine. He was a great, great writer. He's a man who finished the last unfinished Edgar Allan Poe story, The Lighthouse, among the many things he wrote, Yours Truly, Jack the Ripper, uh, and, a, and, a, and a wonderful biography, uh, uh, what he calls an unauthorized autobiography called Once Around the Block, and he died. He died without getting a Grand Master Award, and a lot of people say, well, he wrote fantasy, he wrote horror. He also wrote science fiction, folks. He wrote it from the age of 17 on, when he was discovered by H.P. Lovecraft and, and made part of that inner Lovecraft circle. He wrote a lot of science fiction. But he never got a Grand Master Award. You know where part of this commentary is going because I've been talking about science fiction writers of America and how they have been denying the Grand Master Award to at least six major writers uh, who are in their 60s, 70s, 80s. Bob died without getting that award. The days grow short and SFWA, Science Fiction Writers of America, which says you can only give out six Grand Master Awards in a decade uh, are letting the days go by, and they're talking and talking and talking, and the time is now well past for talking. Those of you who give a damn, please send letters to the president of SFWA, SFFWA. Her name is Barbara Hambly, and say, we read this stuff. You can have all the little private organizations you want, but it's still our literature, and we really want these people to get the Grand Master Award before they die. We're not talking here about not giving it to them this week. We're talking about them ever. If they die, it's too late. Which brings me to the second, the second point that I was going to. Before Bob died, he was a very proud man, and he and his wife Ellie did not want the knowledge that he was dying to get out. Bob wanted to release that information himself. He wrote an article, it's in the current issue of Omni, about facing death. But he didn't want people to know about it because he didn't want them to think that he was uh, uh, needful of money or needful of attention. He was very, very proud that way. Unfortunately, a man who publishes a, a semi-little newspaper, a little amateur rag called Science Fiction Chronicle, before Bob Block died, ran a piece, Bob Block, on his deathbed. And he went into detail about Bob's cancer. It was very unpleasant. And the man was pilloried for it. I'm not even mentioning his name because I don't want to give him that much publicity. And when Bob's daughter from Bob's deathbed called him and said, why did you do this? This is a terrible thing. He argued with her and said it was his right to do it because this was news. Now other newspaper uh, people who happen to be in the, in the genre, people like Christine Catherine Rush, who edits magazine of fantasy and science fiction, she says, no, I've, I've been a journalist all my life. She said it is the public's need to know of the death, not of the dying. There is a lot of this goes on. It is bad taste. Science fiction, the fandom, fans, they're forever writing great eulogies about writers after they're gone. They want to put on conventions in their honor, but they don't do it when they're alive. They don't honor them when they're alive. It's then they can all beat their breasts and talk about how wonderful this person was and do the eulogies that you see in fanzines, endless stupid fantasy, uh, 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 fan fanzine uh, eulogies. But they don't do anything for them when they're alive. What they could do for them when they're alive is get them the Grand Master Award. The death of Bob Block brings this home to us very, very, very sharply now. The time for talk has passed. I've done four of these and SFWA has done nothing yet. Now is the time for those of you, writers and readers and fans and editors who give a damn to do something. Put the pressure on, if for no one else, for the memory of Bob Block.